Hey, are you here because you want to move to beautiful New Zealand to work as a doctor? Welcome, welcome all. My name is Eunice if you're new here and I'm a junior doctor in New Zealand. I have been getting a lot of DMs from you guys on Instagram about how you should go about moving to New Zealand as an international medical graduate. Well, I honestly had no idea so I had to sit down and do lots and lots of research. And what's the answer? It's complicated like really complicated so i've created this guide to simplify it into different categories that may be relatable to you guys which can be found in the chapters below the bottom line is that most of you guys are going to have to take this test called nzrex so i'm gonna just keep calling it nzrex everyone has to sit this exam unless you are any of these four people so number one you are a medical graduate from new zealand or australia number two you are a doctor who has worked in 24 countries that New Zealand has listed as having a comparable health system. Number three, you are a consultant or specialist. Number four, you're here for temporary registration for a special purpose, for example, like fellowship or research. If you're any of those four, you do not need to sit the NZ bricks. In this video, I'm going to be focusing a lot about what NZ bricks is how to apply for it. Before I cover that, I know there are a few of you who fall into one of the four categories that I just mentioned as well. So I'm going to briefly touch on them. If that does not apply to you, feel free to skip ahead. If you are a medical graduate from New Zealand, Australia, Ireland, or the UK, then good news. Things are gonna be very straightforward for you because our health system and our medical school education is very comparable. You will be automatically granted provisional general registration straight away off the bat just because you are a medical graduate from those countries. You won't need to sit an exam, all you have to do is apply through annual recruitment like the rest of New Zealand and that happens once a year, every year around May. But don't worry if you've missed out because throughout the year there will be vacancies as well here and there especially towards the second half of the year because that's when a lot of people gap it overseas. That is currently what I'm doing, by the way, if you don't already know. I'm actually filming this in the lobby area of my Airbnb and I am sweating. But anyway, besides the point, the hospital generally is in high demand of doctors in the second half of the year. If you're interested to hear more about the pathways of actually getting in and applying for jobs and whatnot, I'll leave the link of the website in the description below for the medical council. If you are a doctor who's worked a few years in any of the 24 countries that New Zealand has listed as having a comparable health system, then you are also in luck. This means that you don't have to sit the NZ Rips exam, but however, you do have to have a medical degree, like, duh, and you would have to have worked three years in the last four years in sort of the same area of field or practice in medicine. So these are the detailed requirements that the medical council have written in bullet point. You guys can have a look at that. Again, I'll link the link in the description below. If you are a consultant, a specialist or a surgeon who has just completed your postgraduate training program, then this one is for you. This is where things get a bit murky and it's all dependent on the medical council of what they say. So basically they don't have a list of all the comparable degrees or health system or education. There's no real list on there. So I guess it's a green tick from from my point of view. All you need to do is try to apply for it and submit all the paperwork that they require. And what they'll do is that they'll sit in a committee and then they'll go through all the documents and see whether or not you're eligible to work in New Zealand, whether or not you need supervision, and how long it'll take, and yada yada yada. To be really honest with you guys, like I've seen a lot of happy cases. I'm sorry about the background noise, I'm in Vietnam at the moment. Anyway, where was I up to? So I've seen a lot of happy cases of people getting jobs straight away, coming from overseas, no problem at all. I've also seen very sad cases where a consultant from overseas came into New Zealand and they did not re meet the requirement despite being a consultant for years. And they have to start again from their PGY years. And if you intend to come to New Zealand for a short period of time only, for special purposes, things like fellowship, doing a bit of research, it's a whole different pathway compared to staying here for longer and wanting to work here. Again, there is no need to complete the exam, but you are only allowed to be in New Zealand for two years maximum, so be 
really sure that you actually are only going to be here for two years. I won't go into detail about what's required, but feel free to check out the link in the description below. If you have any questions, of course, like leave me a comment below and I'll answer it as best as I can. Okay, so now to the meaty part of the video, which most of you would have been waiting for. This is the pathway that most of you will fall into if you want to move to New Zealand as a doctor. You guys will have to take the NZ Rex exam to be able to work in New Zealand to get provisional general registration. The thing is, it does not matter whatsoever what your previous experience was. For example, you've been a senior registrar in India and you've worked for tons of years, you have lots of experience, but you have not completed your postgraduate training. What that means in New Zealand is that that's all scraped and you have to start all over again as a PGY1. Yeah. However, to make sure that you're not applying for the wrong thing, the most accurate way of finding out which way of registration is correct for you, there is actually this tool that was set up by New Zealand Medical Council, which is online. It's called the Registration Self-Assessment Tool on the MCNZ website and it's super easy to use. So I'm going to be doing this test on behalf of a medical student graduate in Russia who has been reaching out to me. She said that she's finished her degree but she hasn't started work yet and she'd like to move to New Zealand as a doctor. So I've got my laptop here and I'm gonna go ahead and start doing the self-assessment tool and I'm gonna walk you through what it's all about and which options to tick. So this is where you find your registration assessment tool and I'm going to just go ahead and sort of go and check the things that are not relevant and relevant to me. A lot of these things are not going to be relevant to you but I'm assuming people want to stay here for long term um, and you can see there are lots of examinations, tick boxes that they're asking for you and here's the comparable health system which Russia is not one of them unfortunately another examination and no do not meet this requirement so far and yes I do not apply and that means at the end of it yep you have to sit the NZ Rex exam so what is the NZ Rex exam the NZ Rex exam is an OSCE type exam they have 16 stations and it's three hours long in duration. How they examine you is based on things like history taking, clinical exam, investigations, management plan, and clinical reasoning. If you've already graduated from medical school, I'm assuming that you would have sat these sort of exams already in your sixth year. And to let you know, based on statistics, it's got a 60% pass rate. But the good thing is you're able to sit this exam over and over again, like there's no limits to how many times you can sit it even if you fail. The Medical Council in New Zealand also recommend that you do a couple of years of doctoring after you've graduated from your medical school in your own home country first before you even think about applying for NZ Recs because like I said, it's a clinical exam. It's not like a knowledge-based exam where you can cram looking at text box and you'll, you know, you'll pass the exam with flying colors. It's not like that. Plus it's kind of expensive. It's like something like 3,000 New Zealand dollars to even sit the test and there's no refund. So if I were you, I'd just prepare myself as much as I can before I go spend this big money. But this is the crazy part. There are actually a few requirements that you need to meet, actually quite a few requirements that you need to meet before you can even be eligible to sit the NZ Recs. So these are the requirements. Number one, you have to have a primary medical qualification that is recognized in the World Directory of Medical Schools, so TIC. Number two, you need to meet English language requirements. So there are eight options here, but there are mostly just two that are applicable to most of you guys, which is passing the English test. There's the IELTS test, which, which is one of the most common one, and the minimum score that you have to have across all of the four different categories is seven. And then there's also the OET test that you can take, which you just have to pass. And now this last requirement is what's really bamboozling for me anyway. And that is that you have to have passed any one of these four exams first before you can then sit the NZREX exam. Like, it's not very straightforward, is it? So, 
You have to have passed one of the following exams within the five years of the NZ BRICS exam. Now that you have all the requirements to sit the NZ BRICS, you've passed the NZ BRICS exam, congratulations, now you're here. The thing is, you can't just get the medical license straight away. You need to have had a job offer from New Zealand already first, so a proof of that, before you can then be eligible to apply for the medical license. I know, it's such a fact. And the thing about this job offer is that it's going to be a PGY1 job, which means it's gonna be quite competitive for you to find a job offer. That's because the rest of the country are pushing out new medical graduates going into the PGY1 jobs. So they're gonna prioritize the locals first, and they're also going to prioritize the international medical graduates from New Zealand first, then the next category is you guys. What I do want to say though, yes it is difficult, it is competitive, but it's definitely doable. A quick tip is that it's also so much easier if you start applying for rural, smaller hospitals that are outside of the bigger centers. If you guys have found that helpful and all, I'd so appreciate it if you can hit that like button. It means so much because these videos do take a wee while for me to make. Please let me know. And also in return, I'd like to hear from you guys in the comment section below where you are currently practicing at the moment and what is the reason why you want to come to New Zealand. Please leave a comment down below. Thanks guys, take care.